Hey, good afternoon, new YouTube. Uh, just doing a quick uh, shot here. Um, oh, Rex has a itchy part on his backside. Uh, Rex was telling me that my chisels seem a little dull. Um, and, well, me being dull in general, thought I'd fix something up. So I did a little uh, Googling and checking some stuff out and uh, found a Canadian uh, place called Paul's Finest. It's mainly for sharpening kitchen knives and stuff like that, but they have these Atoma um, diamond cutting stones. It's all in Japanese, so I have no idea what the heck this is. Uh, but they do show how to use chisels and stuff like that. So I thought, what the heck? You know, it's 75, 80 bucks or whatever it was, free shipping. I got a, you know, $5 off for being a new user. I thought I'd give it a shot. So there's 8,000 different uh, videos of how to sharpen chisels and stuff like that. But I thought I'd just throw you... Oh, I got the 1200 level. They're 1200 size. I thought I'd just give you a little, a little gander on here. This is a... a I've had it for years. It's a Master Craft or Master Crap. Uh, whatever you want to call it. It's been a pretty reliable chisel, actually. And I've kind of liked it. And I use it a lot for installing doors and... Um, you know, all the hardware in setting the latch mechanisms and stuff like that. Um, but having done some research, I thought, well, I've never flattened the back of a chisel. No wonder they don't work so great. Oh, come on, focus. Here we go. Here we go. Focus. There we go. So you can kind of see I did a little flattening on it. Wow. It uh, looks like I need to do some more, but it's uh, it made a difference. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to do the, the primary bevel. Well, looky there. The primary grind was not really particularly great. Once I did that, and this is just a 1200, I didn't go to 50 million or 10 trillion or whatever the heck most of these guys are doing, or I didn't strop it with anything. Um, dang, it uh, cuts better. So, yeah, this stuff actually works. I think I'm going to get one of those uh, chisel uh, guides because I got some old hand chisels, which are, I think they're pretty darn good steel, but um here's that bevel on that one okay that was came off the factory and i put a little micro bevel on there with just the um just the stone there but <laughs> let me show you here uh i went at this uh at one I went after one of these chisels with a dead beaver and uh where is he oh there we go so i had some cheap um princess auto diamond stones and uh, no, that wasn't me who made that big uh, oopsie in there. But uh, so you can see all the scratchy stuff. That's the, the Princess Auto one. And it's about as flat as a golf ball. So <laughs> uh, I don't think I did so great on that. I'm going to get a different one of these, a little more coarse. But look at the polish that uh, you can see a little center spot right at, around my thumb there. And that 1200 did a nice job on that. And then I kind of hit the bevel with it. Oh, look at that. It's been chewed up and it's not happy. I don't know what bevel's on there. Actually, it's not horrible. I think I can fix that up a little bit. But yeah, I think I'm going to try and uh, get some more stuff. Come up with some better uh, better sharpening of the chisels. I have a few old planes that I use. You know, hand planes. Not those planes. Anybody want an F-14? Uh, I'm going to whack away at it. So... Yeah, hey, these diamond plates, they seem to cut nice. I'm hoping they're going to last longer than the, the stones that I had. And I never, I had tried to chisel on that once. And it, <clears throat> I might as well used a coarse gr hand grinder while blindfolded and balancing on a donkey. But this seems to work quite nice. Give it a shot, guys. Just a quick update. Okay, Rex told me that, hey, I got to get even better with my chisels. So... He said I should uh, go and have a better look at uh, some of my uh, other ones. So this is that Lee Valley set that I have. And I was playing with that uh, 1200 grit and it was taking forever to uh, work. So I went out and got the uh, 600 grit. Thought, well, this would be good for, you know, maybe flattening some other stones and that type of thing. And then maybe helping to get the files going a little faster. I do find that almost every single one of these um, Lee Valley files has the exact same pattern on it, regardless if I use sandpaper or if I use uh, these diamond plates, these things, if I use an old 
uh, sort of whetstones that I had, they all seem to have the same grind. So whatever they're using seems to leave the same mark. Let's go over to these other ones here. Um, there we go. There's the three quarter inch. You can see they're almost the exact same pattern. I've been chewing at this like a hungry beaver and trying to flatten this out. And man, it does work better. But <clears throat> listening to my dog, he even gave me another suggestion. He said, hey, you're not doing it fine enough. So I picked up a Shopton 4000 stone. Now I know a lot of other guys on the internet do something different. Ugh. These things are hard to do with one hand. There we go. And I'll try not to drop it on the floor because it's glass and ceramic, but here we go. That's my unboxing. So when people are looking at these things, you go, oh my goodness, it's expensive for what? Well, it's actually not bad. It's got a decent amount of, there's a the glass bottom and here's the ceramic top. And they give you how to use it and everything else like that. So, I don't know, I'm going to give it a shot to give it a little bit finer polish. Uh, the reason I went with uh, the 4000 is that I talked to the guys at Paul's Finest. And he said, give this a, a shot because I'm going to do kitchen knives with it. This will take it up to a decent polish. But give a little bit of serration to the knife, which I think will help. But he also said it'll help out with the chisels. And then if I strop from here, it might be a good transition. So I'm going to give that a shot. I can't find my strop in my Jewelers Rouge. Um, I did have this, uh, this Veritas, you know, honing compound. It's about 200 years old. It's kind of like a hard brick now. I tried it a bit on just a chunk of wood that was flat. Yeah, it does seem to polish things up. So I'm going to make a, a new strop on this thing, but... Man, I do find that these uh, stones, they do work better. No doubt that the sandpaper method, it works good. But I was blowing through sandpaper so quickly and it was getting dull so fast. And I thought, well, I could buy more expensive sandpaper, but I can't use sandpaper on other projects because it's diamond something and just go out and get the good stuff. So I got to say these Atomas seem really nice. Fairly consistent. They're definitely dead flat. Um, so I'm going to mess around with this. I'm going to see what happens uh, once I get into this stuff. This is going to be interesting. I just need some plain water. i be using some Windex with these Atoma ones just to kind of help loosen the grind off. You know, all the swarf or whatever it's called, the chunks of metal. So I'm going to go at this, uh, at this chisel a little bit more. See if I can get it to flatten down a little bit better, closer to the tip, and then refine the bevel, and yada, yada, yada. Whatever us crazy woodworkers do with these things. I'm not sure the metal on these things are great. Um, but you know what? For as much as I use chisels, and if I need to pare something down nice and gently, it'll be good enough, and I'll just have to resharpen it again. Which, hey, I'm a kind of enjoying it. Pretty sad that my Friday nights are exciting by the way that I'm sharpening chisels. We all know if we're a woodworker, it's probably what we're going to be doing. Let me work on this. Okay, I went at this thing with my uh, diamond stone there. So you can see where I've really made some dents into it. And the grind on this thing, not particularly great. So I'm going to leave it there. Because I'm not that great of a woodworker, I'm not too worried about bringing that back to perfectly flat all the way down here and I'm gonna lose a lot of metal off the tip of this chisel uh, if I do that. So I think this is good enough for me to get that good primary bevel and get a good polish on it. I did the, uh, or sorry, good flat back. So the primary bevel and the secondary bevel will do good. Um, but man, I, I, I'm not impressed. I took a long time for me to get these things going and maybe that's just Chisels, I don't know. <clears throat> this is my first sort of semi-nice set. And uh, that was a lot of work to try and even... You can see on the right corner there. Um, you can barely just see the primary bevel kicking in. Um, whatever. These would be a way better than what I was working with them before. So give it a shot. Here's some stuff. I'm going to polish these up with the 1200 and then the... Uh, uh, whetstone there and see how that uh, progresses. I'll give you a look at the final uh, 
final result once I figure all this out. Okay, this is the kind of final update on the whole chisel thingy. Um, you can kind of see how the back of this chisel is less than flat in many areas, but I'm okay with what I what I got it down to, I guess. Um, if you look at the very tip here, you can kind of see where the a nice polish on the end there. Um, that last couple millimeters. That 4,000 stone did nice. I think it could do better. I gotta find my strop and get that going, but overall, it made a huge difference on this chisel. It glides through wood so much easier and makes nice concise cuts. So yeah, forget the sandpaper thing, forget the other stuff, it works, but I would just go get the good stuff off the hop if you're really serious about woodworking. Go with that first and uh, don't worry about the uh, interim steps. Otherwise, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. If you're in Canada, hunker down, stay safe. If you're everywhere else in the world, same thing, social distance.